Good evening, dear friends, and welcome to our Thursday night contribution of On Doves for Peace, where we remember Brother Rob, who's not been feeling very well this evening, and as a last-minute resort, I agreed to step in rather than we cancel our show for this evening. So it is good that we can come together at this time of Christmas and support one another. So I would like us just to begin our 30 minutes here around this amazing table of our online community where we come together in love and to celebrate an amazing feast, the feast of Christmas morn. But first, let us be still and come into our hearts, come back to that place where we have many, many childhood memories of Christmas Eve, where we were afraid to sleep because of the excitement and the expectation of Santa Claus coming down our so-called chimney, where poor mom and dad were exhausted from wrapping presents secretively, secretively and without us knowing what was in them. And then at three in the morning, the patter of tiny feet, where we come rushing down the stairs and they rip open the presents and sometimes they weren't ours because as the eldest son of nine, five brothers and three sisters, four sisters, sorry, we often got the presents mixed up. But that was the innocence of childhood. So let us just for a moment listen to the beautiful carol, Silent Night. beautiful Christmas carol, Silent Night, has many beautiful memories, I'm sure, for you, as it has for me. In Back in Ireland, as a young boy growing up, we had some really beautiful Christmas traditions. One of them was a six-foot red candle that Daddy would put in a bucket of sand and place it on a stool in the living room window and you could see all the houses at midnight before midnight as you would go to midnight mass you'd see the white light from the red candle shining through the lounge window 
And when I look back and think back of the simplicity of those rituals, and I remember one day asking the parish priest, why did we do that? And he said, to show Mary and Joseph the way to Bethlehem. A simple, a simple story, but great spiritual significance. Well, I would like us this evening to try and retreat from the busyness of our daily life as we prepare for the coming of the Spirit of the Christ Child, who is the Cosmic Christ. I would like us to go on a journey with Joseph and Mary across the Sinai Peninsula to Jerusalem and bypassing Jerusalem to a little town in Nazareth called Bethlehem. And it's interesting that when you think about it, that God would send a son born of a young Jewish virgin mother and bring to us an offering of help to redeem us from the many mistakes and crimes that mankind would commit in history and that this child would be born not in a palace of wealth but in a simple stable or a cave, or maybe a backyard, that the Son of God would allow himself connect with our humanity and our struggles as he did. But sometimes we need to be reminded, don't we, that God became man so that we could become like unto God, that we could become a child of beauty, a child of love, a child of peace, <clears throat> and that we could live our earthly life as ambassadors of peace, like many of the great spiritual teachers who weren't necessarily Christian, <clears throat> but whose lives were rooted in the love of a supreme being. And that supreme being has many names. But in the Abrahamic faith, both Jew, Muslim and Christian share the love of a supreme God. And they recognize that Christ was a holy man, a good man. But let us come and listen to our heart. For sadly, in our modern world, God gets a lot of bad press. Mankind, many of whom have become despiritualized through success, materialism, the quest for greatness and fame, status. But you and I, who are on this spiritual path, know in our heart that the God we follow is a God of love, a God of peace, not war, and a God who reaches down each day to try and touch us, not through the words of hate, but through the words of love. And the words I'm receiving right now, I would love to share with you, the words I'm feeling in my heart as I'm speaking to you live. I have called you by your name, and I have loved you with an everlasting love. What do those words 
mean for you that the Son of God, the Messiah, the Holy One, the Anointed One that John the Baptist talked about at the River Jordan when he said to his followers, There is one coming after me who is greater than I am and whose sandals I am not worthy to wear. Who was this man? It was the Christ, the Messiah. But for the Messiah to touch your life and to set your heart free from enslavement to fear, he had to be born of a woman. And the Christ is knocking on my heart and your heart, I hope, inviting you to surrender your will, to surrender your mind, to surrender your foibles, your fears, your idiosyncrasies, your doubts, and trust, and trust in a loving God who cares about your needs, who cares about your spiritual journey, and who does not ask you to convert to a religion or a way of life that would enslave you to a religion that's devoid of love. You and I are called by name and you and I are given an amazing gift from God and the gift is a priceless gift. It is the gift of free will where you can choose whether you wish to celebrate the Christmas story or whether you wish to surrender your heart to the Supreme, the one who is the I am presence who is God. You're given that amazing opportunity to say yes, I believe, or no, I don't wish to buy into this nonsense. And what's so remarkable is that this God of love will go on loving you even if you walk away. So let us read for a moment just a reflection from the late John O'Donoghue. I found something just about 20 minutes ago and what I read was to come home to yourself. May all that is unforgiven in you be released. May your fears yield their deepest tranquillities. May all that is unlived in you blossom into a future graced with love. And that is the Christmas story. Whether you're a Hindu, a Sikh, a Jew, a Muslim, a Christian, the Christmas story is a story about love. It's where we allow the hand of a loving God to take our hand, hold our hand, and lead us through the pitfalls of our life, through the mistakes, the traumas, the setbacks, through other people's rejection of our friendship, through misunderstandings and times of great woe. That hand of love is touching each one of us 
and all we have to do is to say yes to God. Each one of us here has a story to tell. Each one of us here wants to celebrate the Christmas story in a way that resonates for us. For me, it's not about materialism. It's not about buying expensive presents. It's not about trying to impress my neighbor or my family. It's much simpler than that. It's kneeling in front of our little crib here in the monastery hallway and looking into the center of that crib and imagining what it was like on that Christmas Eve, cold, maybe snowing, a lonely experience for a young woman who had never given birth before and whose mother wasn't there. Her mother was far from Bethlehem and she's there with an older man called Joseph. She's got shepherds from the fields, their sheep and goats, a cow and a donkey were told. I want us to imagine as I will on Christmas Eve, when I go live at midnight, we will actually come into the stable. We will be participants when the Christ child is born. But for now, we're walking with Joseph and Mary to that stable. And she's heavy with child. I want you to imagine that you are walking alongside her and Joseph is exhausted because he's been walking for many days, prefers to sleep during the day under the shade of the eucalyptus tree and to walk at night where it's much cooler and gentler on the feet for the sand is not as hot then, but the stars of heaven guide him as he holds the lead to the donkey and walks slowly and graciously, ever mindful that the young woman who's on this donkey is carrying the King of Kings, the Son of God in her womb. And you are there. Yes, you are there. You're gently stroking the donkey who must be exhausted as well. And your hand reaches to Mary's hand. And you take her hand. You reach out and you feel the ruggedness of that hand and you make a connection with the mother of God, the mother of the son of God to be. And you walk along the desert floor and you are surrounded by a myriad of angels. Imagine it. You're walking there with the donkey, with Mary and Joseph, and you can hear the angels of God singing to you, singing the praises of God, that in a matter of a few days, the Prince of Peace will be born, and you will be there. And as you walk along, holding Mary by the hand because she's experiencing labor pains due to the difficult terrain, for it's not all 
plain and smooth like on a motorway or the autobahn. It's rugged, it's hilly, and each jolt must be a tiresome experience for the young Mary. But your love, your gentleness, your empathy, your compassion is giving her great strength. For she knows that here is a child of God who is willing to walk with Mary and Joseph as they make this arduous journey to Bethlehem. Just reflect in the silence of your heart and feel within your heart the touch of God, the touch of God's love, speaking to your heart. Each step you take, there is a closeness, an affinity with your God. For God is a God of love, not fear. God is a God of peace, not war. And you and I, still 2,000 years on, have as a bigger part to play today, as did the shepherds and the local people of Bethlehem. For you and I know that the Christ child grew up and he paid the price for our freedom. So Christmas, it's not about hedonism. It's about allowing the divine become reborn again in your heart, in your spirit, in your life. It's about evaluating what is right for you today. It's about looking at your life through the eyes of the beloved God. And it's about seeing what God has made in you through the eyes of love. But today, sadly, so many people look at themselves through the eyes of ego and they're so quick to condemn themselves because they don't look like some famous film star or pop star. They model their life, their fashion, their appearance on how other people look in the glossy magazines. But you and I, who've surrendered our hearts to love, all that is asked of us is that we look at ourselves and our mistakes through the eyes of love. For Jesus said once to his disciples and to Thomas who doubted him so much, Blessed are they who do not see me and yet believe. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Is that where you are in your spiritual journey tonight? Do you feel that sense of closeness with your God? Are you feeling lost in a world of fear, troubles, anxieties, tensions? Or are you making time 
to nurture your soul, your spirit, wherein lives the I am presence of God. Let us just, just for a moment, allow the touch of God. Lay the hand of divine love on our weary hearts and let nothing disturb us, nothing. Let us take to heart what we are sensing in our heart. Our heart is our teacher and our teacher is the gateway to the soul and the soul is the gateway to God and God is love and where there is love there is God the Supreme the Holy One and the Holy One calls you to surrender your fear your worries your anxieties your illnesses your disappointments and trust me we have plenty of them and all the divine asks of you as you prepare with me for the celebration of the birth the rebirth of the Christ child in your soul in your heart in your spiritual journey is to surrender to love. It's to surrender your heart to love so that you become a vortex of love. And instead of preaching the words of God that sometimes scares many people today, many people have become so saturated with religion that they run away and I don't blame them because I would too but they respond to someone who's willing to put their arms around them and hold them and say it's okay and that for me is Franciscan spirituality it's not to preach, but to show it through love, through touch, through a hug. My God, I call the hug machine, for he hugs me when I'm down. Through you, through your love, your prayers, your support, my God is not up there my God is here and the word of God has to be felt through touch so let us just be still and allow the spirit of all that is touch our battle weary hearts and with each in breath let us feel the gentleness, the selflessness of divine love. We are a child of God and we are loved not for what we do or for what we say, but for who we are. child of love, a child of the divine, a co-creator of all that is sacred. Be still. Be still in the divine oneness of your being. For the moment you surrender your heart to the I am presence of God, 
the mystery unfolds, the divine reveals itself to you, and you are brought into that mystery, and it encapsulates you like a coat on a cold winter's night. It keeps you warm, it protects you, it embraces you. 